Hi there, Stephanie here. I'm going to be a broken record on this topic. Uh, people tell me I am a broken record on this topic. And for those of you who are too young to know what I mean when I say a broken record, uh, we used to have audio recordings of our music on what you now might call vinyl. And you would put the record or recording onto a turntable and drop a needle onto it. And it would cycle around and that needle would um, somehow magically make the music come out. And sometimes you'd get a scratch on that surface of the record and it would make the needle get stuck there and you would have the same part of the music repeating over and over again. That's me, the broken record on the importance of using screening data to evaluate the effectiveness of your tier one or core reading instruction. And so here we are at the beginning of another school year, and I just wanna put out there another strong message about the real value of using your universal screening data to reflect the effectiveness of your core instruction and to help you design your core instruction moving forward at the beginning of the school year. So what should your core instruction look like at the beginning of the year for the rest of the year? Um, the mistake that I see so many schools making is that they use their screening data only to identify the students who are at risk. And then they go straight to providing some kind of tier two support for those students. It's a real missed opportunity, especially in settings where you have a lot of risk. If you are looking at a very low percent of your students being on track at the beginning of the school year, maybe something like 20% or 40% of your students are at those grade level expectations after your beginning of your screening, well, that's a lot of risk. And there's no way that tier two intervention outside of the classroom by somebody other than the classroom teacher, there's no way that intervention alone can meet all of those needs. So really what you need to do is sit down as a grade level team, look at the percent at benchmark on the key indicators. So what would those be? Um, identifying beginning sound at the beginning of kindergarten, segmenting phonemes at the beginning of first grade, letter sound and blending letter sounds at the beginning of second, and I would say reading text accurately at the beginning of third grade and beyond. As a grade level team, if you have a high percentage of students who are at risk on those kinds of indicators, then you need to really be designing as a grade level team what your instruction on those skills should look like in the general education classroom in tier one. So this would be making sure you've got sufficient time to be teaching those skills, that the teachers know what the research suggests about the best way to teach those skills, that you have good solid materials for teaching those skills, that all students are in tier one instruction for the instruction of those skills. Students aren't coming out of that 90 to 120 minutes of core to get some kind of, of reading support or some kind of intervention. That's what the three tier model is about. That highly differentiated, targeted to meet the student needs instruction in tier one and an extra dose of that targeted support at tier two for the students who need it. So that's my broken record speech for using screening data at the beginning of the school year.